everybody. Welcome back to Testimony Tuesday. Today, I have a special guest with me. Her name is Karen, and we were connected with a mutual friend and a board member of ours. And this is going to be a unique program because right off the gate, I'm going to tell you right now that Karen is not post-abortive, but she has a heart to serve like no other woman I really have ever met. And so her heart for this ministry is really precious to me. And I, I invited her to be on this program to share with you a little bit about her story and really why this ministry is important. And so Karen, welcome to our Testimony Tuesday program. Thank you. I'm so glad to be here. Awesome. Will you just introduce yourself to those that are watching, please? Okay. I'm Karen Parrish. I have been married soon to be 54 years. I have two sons. I have one son in the ministry and one son is an executive in a, a, a company in Round Rock. Um, I am a special ed teacher. I went back to school when I was 39 to get my degree, um, moved by the Lord to do that. And um, I still see kids in my home. I retired last um, December, but I'm still seeing kids in my home because it. I just, there's so many kids that need to read. That's awesome. One of my very best friends has a, he's 18 now, a grown adult son, but he is low, um, low functioning, autistic and, and nonverbal. And so special needs children are very close to my heart. And I love that you work with special needs. And I think too. coming from my side is in, in talking about like pro-life ministry in general, so many people have this idea that children with special needs should just be aborted. And that is unfortunately the thought of many, many individuals. And I love that you have this special heart in this ministry where you're like, no, they have amazing gifts and they can accomplish so much and you work with them one-on-one -on -one, and I, I just love that so thank you for your heart working with the special needs community oh it's my pleasure it's my honor I, I, and it's truly a gift from God well that's awesome okay well let's just dive in so um and again like I kind of mentioned already you have not had an abortion and um, so why do you want to be a part of care? Why do you, why do you care about care? Because you don't have the story of abortion. Okay. Um, the scripture says all is sin and come short of the glory of God. But my emphasis on is there is no condemnation to them in Christ Jesus. And all of us, every one of our stories, because we have imperfect parents, deal with pain. And I don't care whether it's abortion, um, whether it's murder, whether it's adultery, it doesn't make me, sin is sin and there's pain in sin. And I'm so familiar with pain on so many different levels that I wanna share my heart of compassion for those that, that I meet. Yeah, I love that so much. I love that. Um, and so why, how do you think that you can be a positive influence specifically to those that are coming into our ministry? Well, I work with special needs kids who feel very beat down. Mm -hmm. And I can only imagine had I had an abortion, I would feel pretty beat down. And what I do best is cheer them on. <laughs> and that's what I can do for somebody that's had an abortion because sin is sin. I mean, it doesn't make any difference whether it's abortion or murder or adultery, um, whatever. Um, there's forgiveness and there's healing and healing often comes through encouraging. And that's one of my gifts. Yeah. Well, I can say just from the short time that I've known you, you are very, you just have this personality that just oozes encouragement. I mean, even from our very first meeting where I had gotten hung up in another meeting and you were just so gracious and encouraging and you just truly have this, just this heart's desire to pour into people and to lift them up and to make them feel like they can accomplish anything. Exactly. And you are truly gifted in that. So for that, I thank you. Um, so I want to know 
how you have, you know, you mentioned that you, you understand pain deeply, you get that. Why don't you share with those that are watching a little bit about your story and just really how God has worked in your life and you, and you've observed his God's footsteps throughout your life. Well, I was born into a home where I had a schizophrenic brother, an older brother, um, and to live through that and to be able to put one foot in front of the other today is just a miracle of his. And how God, how I realized looking back, how he was so obvious in my life, he gave me this beautiful lyric soprano voice, which took me out of the home, took me away from my schizophrenic brother, and I had a rageaholic father. So um, I realize now that that's how he protected me. Um, I sang opera. I went to New York City. And there's another uh, incredible happening there. Um, I realized that if I was going to make it big in the, in the show world, I was going to have to sleep around with whomever to get wherever I needed to go. And at 18 years of age, the Lord spoke to me in that still small voice and said, this isn't the life I want for you. And the miracle there is that I listened to it. I mean, most 18 year olds don't listen to too much of anything that anybody says, much less God, but I did listen to it. I came home um, and I've just seen him walk through so many things. The fact that I'm a special ed teacher, the fact that he moved me at 39 to go back and get my degree. Oh, and that's also another miracle because when I was in high school, I had a high school counselor tell me I wasn't college material, which said, uh, that means you're not smart enough to make it through college. And I believed that lie for so long till 39. God said, I want you to go back and get your special ed degree because I had a son. He is our adopted son who had ADD and dyslexia. And um, I mean, it was at a time when nobody knew anything about anything. All they would say about my son is he's lazy. He's, he's just lazy, which I knew was not true. So um, I listened to him, went back to the Lord, went back to college, got my degree. Um, and that was, that's a whole nother thing too. But the fact that I'm here today, um, I, I, I just, I can't let, he's my rock. He's my rock. He's yeah. been there all along. And you, you enjoy leading Bible studies and tell yep. us about some of the ministry things that you do beyond working with special needs. Well, I'm in, in choir. That's my b big thing. I want to keep using that voice. Um, I'm actively in church. I'm actively in Sunday school. Um, the one Bible st study that I led that, and I co-led it um, was um, uh, Search for Significance. And that was one of those Bible studies that I thought I was going to help in healing, but it also helped me in healing. <laughs> and that that was you know a while back what you know that's so so neat that god does things like that it's just like well that was good god i never thought about that yeah. um so and like i mean i minister to my kids i teach tuesday wednesdays and thursdays and that's a ministry that i'm every day that i work with those kids i'm ministering to them in some form or fashion and i get to share god now that i'm in my home yeah. <laughs> and i'm not part yeah. of the public school system <laughs> I love that. You know, and you said something talking about that you led co-led this um, Bible study, but you realized you got a lot out of it yourself. And right. so many of the women that come through our program, they really come thinking, I'm fine. I've dealt with my abortions. I, I've healed. I love Jesus. Many are serving in full-time ministry, you know, women's ministry staff, um, pastors' wives, pastors' daughters, lots of serious, devoted, godly women, and they really think that they're just coming to learn how to help other women, and then they come through our program, and this, that was my story, too. I, I may have shared that with you, but um, I came, I was already serving in full-time ministry. I was, I was living the dream, I thought, sharing the gospel regularly, loving on women. And I just wanted to help women who were hurting in this area, completely oblivious to my own pain because right. I shoved it down so deep and buried it so completely, really thinking that was what I was supposed to do so that I could be 
you know, successful in ministry and, and for okay. purpose. And when I went through care, I just remember showing up and I'm like, these women were sad and kind of scared. And I wasn't, I'm like, Hey, I'm just here to, you know, <laughs> the Lord, woo! And, and then it was just like, Whoa, Oh no, I, I'm here because I need it. And that was, it was kind of gut wrenching just to be real honest, but, um, that's how God works sometimes is he can use what we think is just to better our lives and to, and to want to minister to others to really minister to our own lives and our own hearts. And yeah. he's so faithful to show up. Um, and, and just while we're kind of on that topic, I just want to encourage you if you, have the story of abortion and you've never been through an abortion recovery class of any kind, please just go through it. Maybe you are okay. Maybe you're completely healed, but I love my pastor. He says, you're not going to come out more dumb. You're not going to come out stupider or hurt more by coming. So there's only positive that can come from it. You're not going to regret it. And, and maybe you won't feel completely life transformed like I personally did, but it is going to be a great weekend for you to get to honor the life of your child or your children that were lost to abortion. And you're going to meet some amazing ladies that you're going to bond with and you're going to have this sisterhood with that you never even knew you needed. And it's just a dynamic program. So I highly encourage you, even if you think you're fine, even if you, even if you're positive that you're fine, um, give it a chance. It's free. We don't charge for our program. And it's a dynamic way to just dive into God's word and really work through um, your abortion experience. So, okay. So Karen, what is your goal? Um, to be involved with care what's your okay okay before i answer that let me share right quick the human psyche is is constructed in such a way that there are so many little innuendos that are in our brain that are repressed that are pushed under and mm. um it's like when we go to church and say hi how are you oh, i'm fine just fine thank you very much and you're hurting inside only that hurt for so many people in a subconscious way, you're not aware of. So that kind of co corresponds with what you just said. You went into the meeting feeling great. I'm here. Little did you know that God was going to unmask those areas that that all of us don't see. OK, my my goal is that I you know, I don't know what God has for me in care. I truly don't. But I know he wants me there and I, and he's going to show me what he wants me to do. Um, I, and I hope my goal is to give a positivity, to give hope and to encourage people to live and love for the Lord, no matter what has happened in their life, no matter what has happened in my life. Um, we just need the Lord and we need to get all of the emptiness that we feel out in the open so he can use us in a greater capacity. Yeah, I love that. And you know, and maybe you're watching this today and you're thinking, I don't have an abortion. I've never had an abortion. And, but I feel like I should be involved with this ministry. I wanna encourage you, you know, be like Karen. Karen is just like, I don't know what God wants me to do but I'm gonna do something because this ministry is important. And she knows that the Lord has called her heart and moved her heart in this direction. And we have areas for volunteers. Um, our partnering ministries, Living Alternatives, has room for volunteers. We have places for you to serve. And just please give us a call. And, and I'm going to encourage you, if you've never, even if you've never had an abortion, I'm going to encourage you to probably go through our program because that's going to be the best way for you to really see what we do. Um, but maybe you just have 
words. Maybe you're a gift of words and you want to write notes to the ladies going through our program. Or maybe um, like our sweet friend and volunteer, Angela, she makes these beautiful quilts that each one of our ladies gets um, that come through our program. So maybe you have a calling on your life to, to create something beautiful for the participants that come through. I want to just encourage you, please don't let that gift go to waste. Um, reach out and let's start having these conversations. And, and we may not know what it looks like to begin with. Um, just like Karen and I, we're still working out, like what is her role? We don't, we haven't, she doesn't have a title yet, um, but we do know that her heart for this ministry is real. And, um, and I don't believe that anything happens by mistake and God brought her into this ministry for a purpose. And she clearly has a dynamic heart to serve and to encourage, which is what this ministry is all about. So for that, Karen, I thank you. And I oh. look forward to how God's going to use you um, just as we continue to grow this ministry and reach those that are hurting. Amen. And I thank God for that heart too, because it definitely is from him. It's not something that I could work up. So yeah. thank you for giving me the chance to share. Well, I love it. Okay. So anything else that you want to share to those who are watching? I mean, this, this, this is your, this is your opportunity. Share your heart. Well, like I said, I'm here because the Lord has laid it on my heart. He laid it on my heart way back uh, when I was still teaching public school and people would say, what do you want to do when you retire? And I always said, I want to work with women that are suffering. Mm -hmm. And, um, and I know that he's going to honor that. Yeah. I love that so much. Well, um, I am going to just go ahead and wrap up this episode. It's a little bit shorter than normal, but that's okay. We didn't have a great big heartbreaking story to share with you today, which is great. And we always need to just share positive, you know, experiences. And so um, I'm very grateful for Karen and I'm very excited to see how the Lord's going to use you in this ministry, Karen. And for those that are watching, I am excited to see how God's going to use you in this ministry. Maybe it's going to be to come in and go through our ministry. Maybe that's it. Maybe you'll be one and done. But most of the people that come through our ministry and that really understand what it is that we do want to get involved. And so I'm going to encourage you to please make that phone call 903-944-7852. Please get connected with us because there is something that this ministry needs that God's equipped you to, to give. And Karen, wow, I just love your heart. I love your just desire to minister to our women. And I very much look forward to how God's going to use that in the near future. I do too. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you so much. For those of you watching, remember that no matter what you've done, no matter what's been done to you, there is hope and healing in Jesus Christ. God bless you. And I will see you back here again next Tuesday. Amen.